Hey there friends, it's Shannon Sorensen here and today we are going to do an abstract painting. I have this video sped up to about 300% speed because this painting took about a little over an hour to complete this part and so this video is going to be about 20 minutes showing you my process. As you can see I'm already starting on a canvas that has been painted. I was just playing around last week with some blues and golds, just kind of not using any sort of direction or intention, and I let it sit for a week, and I knew I was going to paint over it. I just had to figure out what I was going to do moving forward. So I went into this painting inspired by water lilies, actually. Um, my parents live on a pond. And there's like kind of this little alcove corner of the pond that goes to the corner of their backyard and these lily pads and water lilies grow and I just always love seeing like these flat green spots on top of the water and how like the florals kind of shoot up from the water so I kind of went in with these shapes in mind that I knew I wanted to create, but in an abstract. And you'll kind of see at different points, I have to push myself away from making it look realistic. I really wanted to capture the shapes and the forms and the colors without it being completely obvious. So that I would say was my challenge for this entire piece to keep pushing myself to explore the shape and the form without trying to make all these details. So this is kind of the base work of the composition. I did want it to create these parts that look like the surface of the pond and then the sky above. There's always just this beautiful blue sky over my parents' house on a clear day. Or even if there's clouds, the blue is really intense and clear and beautiful. So I knew I wanted to use a lot of blue and a lot of green and then throw in some pinks and yellows to give a nod to the flowers. So here I'm kind of making those tall stalks that the flowers grow from. It always amazes me that these things can grow up out of the water and be so tall and they are virtually, you know, just floating on the surface. <laughs> I'm using acrylic paints for this piece. I use Winston & Newton acrylics and Liquitex heavy body acrylic. I've been using these paints for almost a year now and I really enjoy them and I'm actually finding I need to <laughs> I need to go out and get some more I've been using the same colors the same tubes for about a year now and I'm finally getting to a point where I'm running a little lower on some of my favorite colors and here I'm using Neo Color Artist Crayons they are water soluble which I love because depending on if the paint is really wet or dry, the crayons either blend and smudge or they create a really textured effect on top of dried paint. So if the paint is wet, the colors, the crayons become wet and the color blends in really smoothly. And then when the paint is dry and I'm making some marks on top of the dry paint, it gives it a bit more of a dotted, textured effect because it's picking up on the texture of the paint and the canvas. So I really love switching back and forth between the acrylics and the crayons. It helps keep my hands moving, it helps keep me moving a bit free and flowing because if I start getting hung up on one area of the painting 
then I start overthinking it and I kind of get sloppy and frustrated. So for me, it helps stay in the flow to keep moving, keep changing up colors and keep changing up the materials that I'm using. I switch my brushes a lot. Some people tend to use the same brush and keep flowing the color from the same brush, but I do enjoy using different size brushes and different effects depending on the brush shape. This is a very straight, flat brush that I'm using to put down this very pale pink. It's like a ballet slipper pink. And when I was doing these marks, I was playing with the shape of like a lotus flower. And you'll see, I don't really stick to that. I kind of remember that, you know, the lilies, the water lilies that grow around my parents' house are more of like a, a pod, like a tulip shape. And this piece, I, I knew the colors that I wanted to use and I really wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone because I tend to add a lot of other colors into my pieces. If you look at my pieces, it's, you know, the whole spectrum of the rainbow in various parts. And in this one, I really wanted to stay within the palette of greens, blues, and pinks, which I would say I was very successful at. I did add a couple very minor touches of yellow and orange actually which you'll see in the final picture at the end of the video but they are very 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 subtle um, you wouldn't even notice them unless you're looking very closely at the piece and these shapes are so much fun to create with because it helps me stay in the abstract style it helps me remember that you can just have fun with it. You don't have to overthink everything. And kind of keeping that playful style and that playful mindset as I go along, you know, even if it doesn't look great and I'm not happy with a mark, I know that I'm still going to be working over it. If there's a certain area of the piece that isn't working for me, that's gonna change, you know? There's so much layering that happens within an abstract painting. You know, if you think about where I started with all that blue already on the canvas, you can't see any of that anymore. But where I did start with those darker blues underneath, you can see those darker pieces that still come through all those layers creating all the different tones from light to dark. That's what makes an abstract painting really interesting to look at, I think. It helps your eye move around the painting and see all the different places, all the different details, all the different forms and shapes and colors. And what I'm really loving about abstract is you get to enjoy it in whatever way you want. You know, I can tell you, yeah, these are water lilies, this is a pond. But if I didn't tell you that, you could just walk up to this and you feel however you feel. I'm not telling you what to see. I do like using a style that is kind of dreamy and kind of ethereal where you might feel like you're in a dream. You're looking in on this space that is a little fantasy, is a little unworldly, <laughs> but still beautiful. And maybe you can relate to a place that you've experienced in your life or a moment or a memory. And I would say my real goal with making art is that you want to spend some time looking at it and sitting with whatever feeling it gives you, whether that's some calm 
some joy, some peace. My art tends to go a little bit back and forth between peaceful and happy and peaceful and I don't want to say sad, but I would say pensive, reflective. Whatever I'm feeling in the moment as I'm painting, that definitely comes through each piece. So you can kind of see the composition taking place, these shapes, these forms, these lines that are implying that there's water, there's sky, there's clouds, there's flowers, there's lily pads, which you'll see even more of by the time this is done. But I just really love how the colors were blending together. A lot of people don't like using green <laughs> in their artwork. And I'm actually one of those people that I don't typically go right to green. At least I don't think I do. But then I start using it and really love it. I think it adds a lot of beautiful natural energy to the piece. I definitely love working with all colors and I think I tend to lean pretty heavily towards blue but I have really enjoyed finding ways to work color into my pieces in ways that are a little unexpected maybe and just really playing with color when I went to college one of my very favorite classes was all about color and design and how colors relate to each other and how to use color in art in a way that enhances the art. You know, it's, it's not just random. Everything is intentional. And yeah, I just, any chance I get to use a lot of color is a good day. If you look around my house, I have. A very colorful house you know a few years ago I was kind of caught up in a little bit of a minimalist style trying to make things very clean and bright and absent of color and I kind of had a day where I admitted to myself this doesn't feel like me this doesn't feel like my style and the way that I like to have our home so you know you look around and we have red furniture and blue furniture and orange furniture and a lot of color on the walls and in our decorations and in our art. And I really love that because I feel like it reflects us and all the things that we like. You know, if you're gonna hang up art in your home, I just wanna encourage you to curate things that things that you love, things that speak to you, things that you enjoy, not just aesthetically, but like that speak to who you are and what makes you happy. All right, so around here, I'm adding in some lighter color. I'm using white and that ballet slipper pink and really letting the composition take shape. You know, all those little details that you add in, some of them get covered up. <laughs> and that's what I kind of love about abstract painting that, you know, it's all about letting go and getting into the flow. And here I am blow drying the piece to dry it off a little bit so I can do, I think, a little bit more work with the crayons and really start finalizing the piece. You know, looking at it between marks and figuring out what else it needs to make it complete. So you'll see I'm adding some black to green and adding some darker, more shadowy areas to really help draw the eye. And I'm gonna start adding those I would say more obvious lily pad shapes. 
and by adding those dark forms around the much lighter white and pink areas, creating a lot more contrast in the piece, makes it more interesting to look at and really carries your eye all over the piece. You know, you're not just focused on one area. You want to look at all these different areas and how they play together. All right, so here I am doing some drips. I added some navy blue to the top. And I really love doing water drips because I feel like it just adds a whole different energy to the piece with the water. You're not sure where it's going to go. You really have to allow those lines to happen wherever they are going to happen. And here I'm going to add a little bit more pigment and a little bit more water. And you'll really see those blue drips coming down. And I blotted out that area just because I didn't want it fully disrupted with the drip. And then, you know, I blow dry a little bit more because I am a little bit impatient and also kind of blending in those areas at the top so it's not such a harsh transition between that dark blue and the white. And I'll further blend it towards the end with the crayons, with a white crayon. Yeah, I'm definitely getting near the end of this piece. I'm going to do a lot of marking with the crayons now where I go in and create smaller marks, do some blending, add some more playful marks to it. This is the red crayon and I really wanted to add in this touch of color across the canvas. You know when you're looking at a lily, a water lily, it's a very light pink and white and there's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of that deep rosy red that's kind of like a pinkish red. So I want to make sure I included that. And then I love using this bright green crayon. It's almost like a lime green and it just adds so much brightness and so much energy. I'm just adding playful marks, some more circle-y square shapes. I don't really quite know how to describe them. <laughs> some really interesting marks that when you look up close, you know, you might not see them far away. And then you come in closer and see, here's that touch of yellow. Just giving the piece a little bit of warmth, a little bit of orange. You see it in the lower corners. And the orange is just a really nice contrast to all the blue as well. But I didn't want it to overpower the piece, so as you can see, I just used a little bit. And again, I just really love making these pieces. These are memories, these are feelings about my parents' home and where I grew up and the things that I just really love and enjoy and notice out in nature. There's so much detail and so much beauty in the world and each of my pieces is a little tribute to the things that I love, the beauty that I see in the world, the beauty that I've experienced as a kid and as a grown-up and now as a mom getting to kind of experience the world through my kids' eyes and see the things that they really notice and enjoy. You know, art doesn't have to be a crazy experience. All that matters is how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel anything, <laughs> which hopefully these pieces do maybe give you a feeling of nostalgia, of a memory, or of a place that you know that you love. So at this point I thought I was done, but you'll see here is the final piece. I did add some more marks. I added some light pink, I'm going to call them circle squares, <laughs> but floral forms. They're really, you know, 
an abstract form of the lily flowers that grow in the pond near my parents' house. I added a little bit more of that rosy red pop of color across the piece. And that is where we landed. It is an eight by eight canvas wrapped. And if you want to see it on my website, you can hop right on over there. Here's the information. Hey friends, thanks for watching this painting video. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit subscribe below and also hit the bell to be notified about new videos. You can see more of my paintings and work on my website, shannon-sorensen.com, which is linked below in the description. Have a beautiful day.